I am aboard a Bavaria 57, and friends James and Philippa, and my new crew Laura, and we are going to climb Curacao, which is the island most neighboring Curacao in the ABC Islands. So it's about a 20 mile sail. I've got my little Digicel box that'll give us internet for at least another hour. So I'm gonna try this and see how it works. And if I get feedback that it's working, great. If not, I'm just gonna cut it and we're gonna sail. But I wanna give you guys a tour of the boat. Uh, we're healed over right now. The porthole is almost underwater. I'm gonna show you guys right now. I'm just gonna go and go ahead and look at this. It's pretty cool. So check it out. This is the inside. Look at this. That's the sea. Isn't that cool? Yeah. All right. Let's go meet the crew. Hi. Captain James. How's it? Admiral Philippa. Howdy. And Swab Laura. <laughs> so I'm just going to take these guys on a little tour of the boat, then we'll come back and meet, meet yeah, you guys. No Ooh, this is so cool! I haven't been sailing in I don't know how long. It's gonna get windy right now, but I want to show you guys the front of the boat. So, just deal with it. It's a 60-foot boat, so it takes a little while to get to the front. Okay, why don't we introduce everybody? Laura, Hi, where, guys. who are you? Where are you from? Uh, Laura Clover. I am from Missouri. Uh, you know, I'm here to here to crew. Here to be an extra set of hands, camera person, baker. And most importantly, this is her first time ever sailing on the ocean. <laughs> right? Yes, it's amazing. And she's doing amazingly. Uh, I feel a little queasy. Nothing major. You know, it's fine. Still I'm ready for another beer. <laughs> you ready for the beer? Yep, so. Plenty there. Plenty there. Yeah. And Philippa? Hey. Where are you from? Originally from the UK. From Sussex. East Sussex. By the sea. Are you a, so are you a sailor girl for your whole life? Sailor. Yeah, we learned two and a half years ago. Set off from Portsmouth, had never sailed before. Got on this boat, left, and now we're in the Caribbean. Awesome. Good evening, fabulous people. And Captain James. Captain James. So I'm James, I'm Philippa's husband. And as she said, we bought the boat about two and a half years ago uh, in the UK, and then we sailed to the Mediterranean. We spent two seasons in the Med. And then we sailed across to the Caribbean uh, last January, so we've been here almost a year, um, and yeah, just loving it here. It's awesome, meeting awesome new friends. Cool. It's been great. Awesome. It's our first Christmas away from home as well. Oh yeah, it's so, almost Christmas. Yeah, it's almost Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Okay, you guys ready to see a boat tour? I want to take you guys inside the boat. I've got permission from the, the captain and admiral. 
<laughs> so uh, let's go inside and see it. It's pretty cool, man. Okay, so this is the cockpit. It's got dual helms. Oh, I gotta see. Yeah, here we go. One helm. Oh, two helms. This thing's freaking out. Yeah, okay. One helm, two helms. One admiral, one captain, one swab. And then let's go downstairs. Oh yeah, this is nice. Look at this. Big salon. We're healed over, that's why the gimbal is like uh, making this all slanted for you guys. But it's got a big salon down here, big chart table. He's got an iMac. It must be nailed. Is this thing nailed down? This thing must be. It's not. Okay. Oh, it's. Oh, I just screwed it up, actually. Shoot. It's a cigar. <laughs> the cigar got in the way. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, big galley in here. There's the galley. There's the other side of the galley. The cutting station, maybe. This is a this is a keel step mast, so the mast comes all the way down through the boat and is all one piece all the way to the deck, which is nice. Way to go, Bavaria! And then look at that captain's cabin. Oh my God, that is nice, super nice. Look at that. And then there's an ensuite head in here. I'm not going to go in, inside their head, but there's a. Actually, I will. Why not? Why not? Hopefully there's nothing weird. Uh, there's a shower on one side, and then just tuck this stuff in here. And then there's a head on this side. This is the toilet. Cool. Yeah, it looks good. Good. Good guys. Oh boy, Jesus Christ! Oh, I gotta latch, latch that. I gotta latch it. So if you guys are just tuning in, I am aboard a Bavaria 57 out to sea, and I'm showing you guys a boat tour and see, showing you where we're going. We're going to see on a chart where we're going. We're going to see uh, a little bit of a tour, and yeah, that's why the that's why the whole thing is tilted just a little bit because we're healing. So let's finish this tour up with our bedroom. So there's two cabins in the back. They're both mirror images of each other, and they both have ensuite heads. So I'm just going to show you one. Well, what's this? This is the shower, which is accessible from outside. And then this is the bedroom. Yay. I've got my guitar. We've got our little, this is how I'm having this live stream right now. There's this little box. And then uh, there's the view. We're sailing people. We're sailing. And then there's an ensuite head in here. This is this is pretty nice, huh? Also with access to this. Cool, right? Oh, I forgot to turn off notifications. I gotta do that. We'll do that in a sec. That will be so nice. So when we oh boy. were in Ibiza, we went out to oh boy. Ibiza to Formentera. And it's my friend's birthday. I should show you the mini chair. The mini jet? Well, you can't really see it, but. And uh, yeah. I, I said to her. Oh, you can access it from here? It's in. Uh, this there is, it is there. You, know, you can't really see, see the steering wheel and the seat to it. This is your dinghy. You That's can actually. the jet tender, yeah. You can get into your dinghy from the top? No, you can't get into it, but you can, you can access it for storage and stuff. Oh, I like that. That's cool. So. This, so tell, tell me about tell me about the jet tender. So it's a Williams Mini Jet 280, so it's 50 horsepower, but only 2.8 meters long. So it's tiny and it fits. It's the, the boat's the, the tender's meant for the boat, um, but it's powerful enough that you can wakeboard from it and water ski. And um, we love it. Well, I love it. It's probably my favorite part of the boat. <laughs> awesome. And. Um, you can wakeboard from behind that, right? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, it's 50 horsepower, so it's, it's pretty powerful for such a small boat. Yeah. And it's like a, it's a jet ski engine, so it's a rotary engine, like a jet ski. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's cool. Sweet. Um, let's see, there we go. Okay, so. 
How? You can kneeboard from it too? Yeah, yeah. Really We're going to do that this weekend, though. Oh, awesome. So if you guys don't know, I've got a, um, a WhatsApp group that's comprised of just my patrons that I upload daily of all my adventures and what's going on with the boat. And pretty much any video I, you see on YouTube, they see that first. And they see that real time. And then I edit from those videos. So if you'd like to be part of that group, you can join Patreon and, uh, and join us. There's about 130 people in there now. And I think there's a cap of like 250. So get in now. All right. So I really want to hear from Laura. I want to hear what you think of the life on the lean. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a new perspective on many levels. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm just trying to, trying to uh, not get sick and just try to relax. I mean, have you, have that, you felt sick at all? I, I felt a little sure. crazy. Um, but nothing too bad. I mean, nothing that would disable me or stop me from drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Heaven forbid. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's gorgeous. But, like, I had to, like, I had to walk, truly. So, what about, um, let, let's hear about your, your guys' story on how you bought the boat, what you think of the boat, what you think of, uh, uh, buying a new boat versus buying a used boat. So, Give me the skinny and where you've so, been. So Philippa had never, she'd never sailed before. She was a city girl. She worked in London, you know, in the corporate sort of world in fashion. Um, sailing probably wouldn't be her natural choice. And I, I took her to a boat show. I took her to the Southampton boat show just to look at boats. We weren't thinking of buying anything. And we went on, actually, funny enough, we went on this boat, like this same model as this boat. Uh -huh. And um, she said, oh, this, is, this isn't much smaller than my apartment in London. I could live on this. And I thought, oh, okay, well, maybe we should just talk about that. Because I was selling my business at the time. And um, I sort of said to her, I said, look, how about we buy a boat and sail around the Med for a year? Just, you know, sail around Italy, Spain, the Balearics. It'll be beautiful, it'll be lovely, it'll be perfect. And anyway, she agreed to that. So we ordered the boat, we spec the boat, we bought the boat, we picked up the boat, we sailed to the Med. And then I said, look, you know, we've, we've bought this boat now, we've got to keep it for more than one year, you know, we've got to get the, the benefit from it. So we did another year in the, in the Mediterranean. And, and then I said, listen, really, we've got, to, we've got to go to the Caribbean. We can't not cross the Atlantic. We've got to sail across the Atlantic and go to the Caribbean. Um, so that's what we did. So every year we've sort of been extending it, but um, you love it, don't you? Now I, I mean, love you, it. She, I love she's it. done really, really well, really well. Uh, and how many miles have you guys actually gone? Um, we were speaking. No, much. We were speaking about that the other day. Um, I'm not really sure because we've lost our we lost, we lost our logbook. It fell over, fell overboard. Oh, when we were crossing the Atlantic. Yeah. But I reckon we're we're over twenty thousand now. Wow. Yeah, we yeah. we did ten thousand in the first year. And that was that without crossing an ocean, that was just going around the Med, so... Um, and when we left Portsmouth in 2018, we travelled for three weeks from England to Malta. So we had to get from England to Malta, didn't we, within yeah. the space of three weeks. Yeah. So having never sailed before, I mean, James had sailed a little bit, a tiny bit. We literally left Portsmouth 2018 and just sailed away and that was it yeah so and we did it in three weeks all the way to Malta but that's, the, the that's nice so thing, ballsy the yeah. nice thing about this yacht is being a modern yacht all the winches are aft you can reef without leaving the the cockpit um it's a, it's a, although it's quite a big boat it's quite an easy um, boat to sail um for just two people I mean you could even really sail it with just one person once you're sailing but two people is is it's much easier for when you're docking and things like that um yeah. And what else did you ask me, James? You asked me my thoughts on buying a new boat. So, oh, <laughs> my, my, difficult. So, it's difficult. if I knew now, um, if, if it, you I, knew yeah, then, what, what you I knew now, now, I would say Definitely. don't think that buying a new boat means you're going to get a boat with no problems. You're going to get a ton of teething problems with a new boat. Um, so I'm not saying I'd never buy a new boat again, but I'd do it very, very differently. What we well, now we know everything. Yeah. Now we know what we're looking for, which we didn't really know before. 
now we know what to look out for. Yeah. We can, if we were to buy a new phone, we'd be looking for those things. One of the biggest mistakes that we made, and I think anyone could make, is to buy a boat and sail away. Like we bought the boat and sailed to the Med, so all the problems we had, we were miles away from the, bro from the broker who supplied the boat. They had to fly engineers out to us. It just, it, it just creates such an, uh, um, just a level of complexity. No one's looking forward to it, so I'm just really forward. And it makes it, it, it just makes it really difficult to get things done and things fixed. So my advice would be, if you're if you're buying a new boat, at least the first month to two months, don't sail away. Be in the area where you bought the boat, and yeah, if things aren't sure. right, you can throw it back and say, "Listen, fix it." Um, we all because we had a few problems, we held money back, um, but we didn't. With hindsight, we didn't hold enough money back. We only held back five thousand pounds, and um, with all the issues that we had, we should have held back more than that. So I'd do things very differently if I was buying another new boat, for sure. Yeah, sure. I mean the thing is though, I think if anyone's thinking of buying a boat, buy one second hand that you know someone has really looked after yeah. it, like get to know the person quite well. You know, yeah. talk to them about what they've done to it, really get involved as to what they've done, how they've looked after it, where they've been, and, and take a real deep view of the boat before yeah. you enter into anything. I think that's um, good advice. I mean, this, this, although this is a production yacht, we're hull number six. So they only built five boats like this before us. So it's not a production like a BMW or a Mercedes or something like that. This is much smaller scale, so you get these interesting and you get things that aren't working and aren't, aren't done properly. Um, so buying a boat from someone who's gone through everything and got everything working properly, yeah. um, and you'll save a ton of money buying this. But then having boat, said well. that, the upside is that we've learnt a huge amount through some of the issues. So that's the upside yeah. of it. If, yeah. I, I think if we were just sitting back, just enjoying everything and not actually facing any of the issues or the problems, then what would we know that we know now? So yeah. now we're equipped yeah. we so to speak <laughs> yeah so to speak I mean there's a lot to be said for getting to know your own boat and getting to know the systems on your own boat and then when something goes wrong you know how to fix it especially if you're out to sea you know crossing the Atlantic we had some dramas and um, we had things that we needed to fix um, but luckily we would you know we knew the boat didn't we? so yeah. we knew how to fix them yeah yeah and can I just say that this is a very, very comfortable boat. Like, look, let's see if we can get a, a picture of the cockpit from back here. Because look at how much space we have here. These actually go down. So if you're sailing at night, you can actually put these down so you can put them sleep here. They're not working at the minute. We need to sort them out. But it's really nice because you can sleep here. You can so one person could be sailing and on watch. Nice. Beautiful. And then the dual helms, do that, does that come in handy? Yeah, I mean, not, not as much as... You think no, you not, I mean, to be perfectly honestly, not really. I mean, it's nice now when we're on the hill, I can go to this one and I've got a nice view. Um, where it comes in more handy is when you're docking. Um, but then having said that, the throttle's on that side, so really I always need to be on that side, so... I'd say that's not really. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind whether the yacht had a single helm or a dual helm. What's nice is you've got the two B and G um, plotters, so you can have one with your wind, one with your charts, and these ones you can have for the track and boat speed or what have you. Speaking of that, can you show us where we're at and where we're going on the on the uh, yeah, so on the map here? On the chart. I mean the chart. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, so let's give you some perspective where we are first. So this is Venezuela. So we're looking at it. We're we're on. Um, this is that's south. That's north. It's upside down, but that's the way we're we're going. Um, so if we zoom in, you've got Aruba, Curacao, and Bonaire, the ABC Islands, and then we are heading. We are heading here. So we're going to sail along here in a little bit and then we're going to put a tack in and, and try and get to Klein Curacao which is a little uninhabited island about 20 miles off the coast of Curacao. There's one boat there by the looks of things, let's see who that is. Oh really? Yeah, it's not going to pick it up, I think it's too far away. Uh, 
Okay. Well, maybe, hopefully they don't have our mooring. Hopefully not. So let's see the what you're viewing here from the cockpit is this. Oh yeah, looking good, man. You guys want another view from the front? Yeah. I'll try to get up there and, and uh, take another view from the front. This is a really... Oh yeah, we've got a couple of fishing lines out. We've got one over here. So that, that line is out, and then we've got a hand line. Okay, so we just say that James wanted to buy fish from the supermarket yesterday. Shut up! <laughs> hey, you're not supposed to tell anybody that. No. <laughs> <laughs> the real sighting cigar. So if you guys didn't hear that, uh, we we're both named James, and the two Jameses have a competition going on to see who's going to catch a fish. So this is my line here. I've got the hand line, and then. This is the other James's line, the, the fake James. <laughs> That's his line. So whoever catches the fish uh, doesn't have to clean it, all they, doesn't have to make the sushi, all they have to do is just eat. All right? Is that, is that, is that the game? Oh, and Philip is going to be gutting it, yeah? Oh, yeah. yeah. James normally catches the fish, the fish, and then it's Philip, uh, and then he turns his back and he can't bear to see any of the gutting going on. <laughs> <laughs> is this true? Completely exposed. <laughs> Egg was exposed. Is this true? <laughs> oh, my true. God. It's all nice. <laughs> oh, my gosh, guys. <laughs> all right. Let's go and see the front of this boat. Beautiful. We definitely didn't raise that jib up high enough. Yeah. We did get it on camera, yeah. I, I got our, our poor sailing style on camera for everybody to see. What do you think? Uh, I think we're sailing just fine. Yeah? <laughs> yeah? As long as we're moving? As long as we're moving, yeah. Totally. And we're not tipped over either because I so, was kind of scared for a minute. So Philippa, Philippa, come and sit, come and sit down. Uh, I want to I want to interview the girls and see what's your favorite part of sailing. Ooh, what's Arriving. Favorite? What's your least favorite part of sailing? My least favorite part of sailing. There's kind of two things. So when we did the Atlantic the last week, we had a beautiful first week because there was a hurricane in the North Atlantic, which sounds a bit counterintuitive now. The first week, the waves were amazing, so we were sailing down the waves the first week. The second week, the waves were super choppy, so we couldn't sleep. And the last three days for me, the sleep thing, the sleep thing was quite a big thing, especially yeah. like the last, two, last the second week. And the other thing is, when the boat heals so much, and all my stuff in the kitchen just goes flying in the cupboards, and we arrive somewhere and I'm going to clear the whole lot up again, so... But you know, that's fine. And what was the other question? Your well, what's oh, your favorite? favorite? This! <laughs> yeah, oh, that's me? easy. <laughs> no, you're next, you're next. <laughs> Sorry, I'm You like shut up! <laughs> what about you and your limited experience, Laura? Yeah, I don't even... Well, this I mean... <laughs> oh, by the way, by the way, if you're just tuning in, this is her first sail on, on the ocean. Never been on a sailboat before. Yeah. She's doing amazingly. I think you're doing absolutely amazingly. 
I you. I want my first time. <laughs> Oh, yeah, um, just put your brave face on. Or... So, well, uh, it's a little both, you know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I have a least favorite. I mean, this, this, what's it called? Healing? Yeah, healing. This is, uh, this is yeah, this is intense uh, angle to be at for a long time, but it's exciting. I mean, I love excitement. This is why I'm here, for the excitement, and yeah. Do you exciting. think you could sleep with the bo boat healed over like this? Uh, do you think probably. you could make food with the boat healed over like this? I don't know. Probably not. Can you use the oven when it's healed over? Yeah. yeah. It's, on, it's on a gimbal. The, the oven's on a gimbal, so it all, it's like this. It, always, it stay. always stays. The only thing you need to make yeah. sure is that you put it on the gimbal when it's like that, because the oven's this side of the boat. It's so obviously, if you open the oven, you'll always get it. Yeah. <laughs> not my waffles. <laughs> Which has happened before. Yeah. Okay, James, your turn. What's up? Your turn. What is your favorite and least favorite part of sailing? Oh, my least favourite part probably is fixing stuff when it breaks. Um, there's always something to fix on a boat, always. It doesn't matter if it's a new boat or an old boat, things break. Um, I think my most favourite thing is visiting all the different countries and meeting new people, you know, meeting people like James and hundreds of other people we've met on our travels. Laura. Yeah, and Laura, obviously. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think traveling and experiencing new places and I mean, we this love, is our home, Anchoring, this is where we live we? and we've lived in so many different countries We now. love Anchoring, we love to Yeah, we, love, we, we don't like being in the marinas so much, we prefer being like an anchor. Um, but yeah, I'd say the travel side of things is my favorite, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, James? Yeah, what about you, James? <laughs> You're supposed to say your least favorite as well. Oh, did I'm, you do oh that? sorry, I'm sorry. No, that was the fixing. No, I did, I did the constantly fixing, fixing stuff. Oh, was my least favorite. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. I mean, I that's, see that. yeah. It's just, you've got to be a mechanic and an engineer and stuff breaks all the time. And anything to do with boats is super expensive. So, yeah, I've, you know. I've been um, noticing that. Yeah. Can you take apart yeah. a motor like James can? Not really. <laughs> no, no. I'm not uh, so good on the mechanics. I'm good at electrics and I'm good at... Um, yeah, I'm good at electrics and things. Electrics I'm is... Not, since I service the generator, I do things like that. I mean, I change impellers, but I wouldn't get a strip he, end. He's being he's, modest. He's a, he's a DIY guy, too. Yeah, he super Defin is. Definitely he's, he's DIY guy. He's amazing at doing stuff. Yeah. He really you know, is. I do my best. So, so we've got a question from the audience. Go on. D. Sullivan says, how do you stop the boat if you catch a fish? <laughs> ah, so that is a good question. So at the moment, we haven't caught one. <laughs> we are, yeah. At the moment, we haven't caught one, so it doesn't matter. But at the moment, we're we're sort of quite close hauled, so we can just point the boat into the wind. We'll have to like change course by about thirty degrees, so it's quite easy, and the boat will stall. But when you're sailing downwind, which is what you do most of the time when you're crossing an ocean or you've got the trade winds behind you, um, you haven't got that luxury because you've got to turn the boat completely around to do that and it, it's it's difficult so with James's line which is my other line it's a hand line so the the, the line is really really strong it's I think it's 300 kilograms or 300 pounds I don't know 300 pounds I think it is he's, he's hoping so basically <laughs> you just get the fish to the surface and then you just pull and the fish just basically gets dragged along the surface of the water and because it's on the surface of the water it can't swim and it can't it can't sort of get away from you with the rod, it's a lot more difficult because the rod bends, you've got to play the fish, fight the fish, and it's a real challenge. So um, it's much easier to, to land a fish on the hand line than it is with a rod. Um, For me, when, I, when I'm going down, you're never really going straight downwind unless you have a, a symmetrical spinnaker up. And so whatever, whatever way you're veering off, you just head up into the wind and round up and then stall the boat. And sometimes you even need to just let the sails out. I mean. What kind of, you know, how, how much do you want to get that fish into the boat? Right, yeah. Is it, is it worth letting the sails luff a little bit for that? I yeah. think so. So that's really what it's I do. It's expensive for sails. <laughs> but on a monohull boat, what you can do is you can backwind the jib and then let out the main and you can do what's called... Uh, heave uh, two. Je ne sais quoi. Yeah, heave two. Yeah, but <laughs> on this boat, you can't because it's a self-tacking jib. 
um, you'd have to run an extra line oh, no. to lock it off because you can't lock it off. It's self-tapping. Oh so no! You can't yeah. Too How easily. do you two? Not easily. You'd I mean, we've been sailing like this though, and That's then we've really caught the fish. And really yeah, you just pull the fish in. I mean, if it's raining. I mean, big, it has been. Uh, but like, have you guys ever been in heavy weather and needed to heave two and not been able to? No. Oh, gosh, we've never. Good. We've never had to heave two um, in heavy weather. Thank goodness. Um, we've always just gone with the wind really, had the wind behind us so the apparent wind is a lot less um, and put a like a little handkerchief of sail out there and um, yeah, we so never had that issue. We've got another question, Lily Vaughn says can you survive on the fish you catch in the ocean? Ooh. It depends on how good a fisherman you are. <laughs> <laughs> how good a fisherman wow. are you? Can we survive? I mean, apparently James can't survive unless we're close to a supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lie. But I don't know, you know, we can sail for days and not catch anything. With and the, then you'll, the you'll go out. through some sort yeah. of shoal of fish and you'll, you'll, you'll catch several. Or sometimes you've got two lines out and you'll catch two fish at the same time. So it, it, it just really depends. But we, we do sail for days without catching anything. Yeah. Um, and then suddenly, boom, you'll catch a couple of fish. So Stuart St. Clair says, saying hello from Rye East Essex. Oh, Rye East Sussex or Essex? Rye East Sussex. Sussex or Essex? I don't know. If it's just Rye East, yeah, must be East Sussex. Yeah, of course. That's where I used to live. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Rye East Sussex. Okay, what's yeah. the thing? Uh, Stuart St. Clair. Oh, okay. Hey, Stuart. I used to live in Rye. <laughs> Stuart St. Really? Clair. Do you yeah. know Stuart? No, I don't think I do, but that's cool. It'd be funny if you guys were like neighbors or something. Like yeah, that. right. Yeah. Um, what watch are you using? What watch? You, which watch do you have on? <laughs> People want to know. Uh, GMT Master, Rolex GMT Master. Good watch. Had it 20 years. Never serviced it. It's not like a boat. It never you goes wrong. You have nearly lost it a few times, though. Oh, oh no, really, man. I've, I've, I've done all sorts of work. Yeah. It's just it's bulletproof it's watch. Bulletproof. Can, you can go in the water with it. Yeah, I go yeah. diving with it. Oh, it's uh, yeah, it's good watch. Very good watch. Okay, enough of the boys. We're going to turn on the girls. You, you guys turn to answer some questions. <laughs> All right, James, can you can you come hold this for a sec yeah, so yeah, I can sure. just get the questions from uh, from the audience? Yeah. It's the time of the day, boys and girls, where you need to ask questions to the girls. You ask them, I'll ask them, and they'll tell you. <laughs> you ask them, I'll ask them. It's a relay. The relay questions. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Okay, what internet co connection are you using? We're using a MiFi box. Yeah, MiFi box. Never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. That's what you've been using for a while though, isn't it, James? MiFi box. Yeah, yeah, it works really good here. Yeah. What's Laura's story? Who cleans fish, boys or girls? Do you ever get seasick? Go! <laughs> Hi. Um, yeah. Oh, it's up for you? you? Go ahead. It's for both of you. Uh, do I ever get seasick? Very occasionally. Um, it's actually a really good question because one of the things that we've found out through suffering from occasional sickness, so we'll be on a journey like this and maybe James and I will have got up in the morning, would have made some coffee and, and actually tea as well. We'll have got up in the morning, made some tea. And suddenly, sort of 20 minutes later, we're feeling really sick. And it's coffee and tea to avoid. If you get seasickness, then coffee and tea is the worst thing you can drink in the morning. Um, we've really found that that's a, a, a no-no for sailing if you only get seasick. I've also um, heard alcohol. Oh, cheers, cheers for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, can you find bigger sunglasses? Uh, maybe, uh, okay, probably. They've <laughs> both got quite big sunglasses. Are they? Maybe it's because they've both got sunglasses. I don't know how they're bigger. <laughs> I do, I it's do. They've got sunglasses. Yeah. They're heads. They've got heads. Okay, Jam, Jam says, who cleans the fish, boys or girls? Girls, me. We me. catch, they right clean. Don't, don't take anything from these boys. Trust me, girls. <laughs> Trust me. I feel it, I fish. <laughs> okay, John Gilmore says, what's Laura's story? Ah. Uh, Start from when you were born. I won't. No, no. We want to keep some things a mystery. I do anyway. But I uh, was in St. Louis um, baking 
and I met James and he asked me to crew on his boat and I said yes and I came. I quarantined two weeks in Aruba and I've been here for about a week now. So yeah. Um Ainsley Henderson says, do you both work whilst sailing? Yes. What do you mean? <laughs> so yeah, we put them to work all the time. <laughs> Everybody works on a boat. Yeah. That's what you mean by work. Yeah, well that's true. that's true. Being on a boat is full time work. Yeah. It's it's a lot of work. It's a lot of cleaning, tidying, de-rossing. We just spent James and I just spent the last uh, six weeks completely de-rusting and cleaning and cleansing the boat. Basically just doing all the maintenance, the annual maintenance. Yeah. yeah. And I, I got put to work day as soon as one. As soon as I got here, I was I was put to work. Uh, so yeah. You want to sit down? I got a I got a question for you two. Okay. Uh, or or that, that's good. That's a good spot too, actually. Okay, I'll sit down. Just checking we're going in the right direction. I'll just bring <laughs> you to anything. <laughs> yeah. Check we're not end up in Who's before. driving the boat? <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, guys. So um. Uh, nope. Nah. Says. What do you do for money to afford the lifestyle that you have now? Okay. You don't have to answer this if you don't so, want to. No, no, that's <laughs> cool. I think um, if you're going to do something like this, you need some sort of passive income. Not necessarily passive, but you need some sort of income that you get every month. So for me personally, I, I bought some rental properties when I was quite young. And um, the rents come in every month and, and, and that helps us a lot. Um, I've also got a, an internet business as well, so that's something I can do remotely. It's a software business, so I can I can program and, and do that remotely. Um, and again, that's residual, that's money coming in every month, so that really, really helps. Um, so yeah, that would be my advice, is get some sort of revenue stream that is it, you, that you can produce money without actually, actually having to be in a certain place. Cool. Awesome. And Philippa, you want to make videos, don't you? I do, indeed. Oh boy! I do, videos, I, do. So. <laughs> <laughs> I do a bit of racing as well. I left my job in London, which I was doing for 14 years. Oh, wow. And um, as we said earlier on, we were lucky enough to have this opportunity to come sailing. So I had to get up my job, which was fine. Um, and I do a little bit of writing on the side. And, but yeah, I'd love to do more videos. That would be great. Oh! Our journey. I, th I think there may be another YouTube sailing channel uh, popping up. Another in the one. <laughs> this one, these guys are awesome. You guys, if they, when they make their channel, go and, go and see them. Aww, thanks, Jay. I'll be putting out a plug for you. Aww, more, thanks, man. Thank you. more than once. <laughs> I love you guys. Love you too. Okay, so here, you take this. Film some ocean. <laughs> oh, you know Wait, what? Right, you guys, know what? We, we got to go up to the bow. Thing. That's what that's what everybody asked for us to do. Put okay, I'm taking Laura to the bow. Let's go. Okay. I'm gonna call oh, the man. dolphins for you. Okay. We just, we just call it now. You, when you call the dolphins, is it like? Ah, 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 ah. It absolutely is. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, Laura, let's go. Time to go back. Yeah, go. Go. Oh, 
shit, I did something. I pushed a button. <laughs> We're going the wrong way. <laughs> Okay, let me see what other questions we have from the audience. That gives me hope. I came from a background of working in London for over 20 years. Never stepped foot on a sailing boat before. I did a five day course in South Africa. A sailor with us um, for the first three weeks when we left Southampton, and he has done Mark High. If you're watching, <laughs> he's done over 40 years of sailing, and he said you can never learn enough. Every day he's learning, so I don't think you can ever learn enough. And yeah, we're le we're learning every day. Every day is a learning curve. So somebody wants to know where I'm from. I'm from Seattle originally, actually Puyallup. I'm from Puyallup, Washington. P-E-U-Y-A-L-L-U-P. Uh, it's a small town south of Seattle. I'm not a, I'm not a uh, born sailor. I got my first boat when I was 26, and I moved on it six months later when my girlfriend kicked me out of the house. <laughs> and I've been living on boats since. Uh, which I'm not going to tell you how many years that's going to be, or that is. Yeah, how old is James? Put it in the comments. Um, a couple of people want to know how sailing long term has changed your your lifestyles, and are you scared when you're on the open ocean and can't see land? Um, the thing is, I always tell myself. So when I'm when I'm in the middle of the water and I can't see anything. I just tell myself that instead of saying I'm surrounded by sea, I'm surrounded by land. Because you're always still surrounded by land, you just can't see it, right? I mean, if you I, if you I go the same direction that. forever, you're going to run into something, right? Exactly. Well, boats don't really like land, they like water, boats float, <laughs> so I'm more scared when I'm nearer the land because I've got more chance of running aground or hitting something. Exactamente. So, you know, the thing is, you don't cross an ocean knowing that it, there's going to be hurricanes. You, you wait till, yeah. well, you, you, know, you, you, you get a weather window yeah. and you, you do it at the right time of year. That's what you should do anyway. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, there are scary moments, but you just have to face it as it comes. Uh, so, they wanted to know what's going on with my boat. Um, with the Oyster, I've got the engines turning over, but I, I needed to clean out the tank to, to uh, get all the crud out of it, because it's been sitting for quite a few years. I think five years, actually, is now the more of the truth. I was told three years when I bought the boat. Uh, so that's being cleaned out. I'm, I'm rebuilding the battery box because the old batteries had exploded in there and gotten battery acid everywhere. And I got the fridge working, the AC working, all the electronics are now working, and I got batteries. And uh, Ryan and Sophie Sailing, another sailing channel, are down on the hard in Curacao Marine where my boat's parked. And they own Dakota Lithium, which is the place I got my battery. So they're going to try to hook me up with some 12 volt, uh, 24 volt versions of my batteries when I get to Florida. So good things are coming. I'm gonna do the engine video very soon where the engine's gonna be running, I promise. And uh, 
I think after the engine's running and the batteries in, are installed, can then, I can, then I can do the, uh, the running rigging, yeah. put up the sails. Oh, yeah. And then finally, maybe we all can go sailing on my boat next time. Yay! Woo! Yeah, but that's, that's the update with the Oyster. Hmm. Uh, let's see. How often do you flog the crew? <laughs> what do you like to know? <laughs> James and I are just the crew. <laughs> just um, the two of us. How much did you pay for the boat? James is 49. You dick. Oh! <laughs> um, how long did it take you guys to become sailors? That's a good question. Oh, I think you're. I think you're always learning. Yeah, I mean, you can do. There's RYA courses in the UK. I'm also called in the US. What is the ASA? ASA. So in the UK, it's RYA, the Royal Yachting Association, and ASA in the States. So you can do a course, uh, like a day skipper course, or you can do a competent crew course, and you learn the basics. But there's no substitute for no. learning on your own boat. And as I said before, you're always learning, always. Because also all boats are different, so the minute you get on somebody else's boat, everything looks different, you have to learn the boat, and I don't feel that I learned, I mean, I don't really feel like I learned anything in comparison to actually sailing, and and also sailing you, you can't experience different weather conditions, you know, the weather changes, and yeah. sea traffic, and I all mean, that. I mean, South Africa was quite hardcore to, it's windy. to train in. Um, but as James said, there's no substitute for actually sailing and sailing away and just just going through it basically. Hmm. Uh, everybody's asking your name, Philippa. Philippa. <laughs> that's a very. My name's Philippa. That's a bit odd name for for the Americans. Is What's it your, really? Yeah, Philippa's not a very common name in the states. Is it more Pippa in the states? Yeah, maybe? Pippa probably. Yeah. Pippa sounds very very. Uh, British stuff. Does it really? Hello, Pippa. Hello, how are you? <laughs> it's normally Philippa or Pip. Hmm. Um, Shane Downey asks, James, have you have you ever met SV Sophisticated Lady, which is Rick Moore? And Rick and I are buds, but like I've never actually met him. So much love, Rick, if you're out there. Love your channel. Love you, buddy. But uh, no, we haven't actually gotten to sail yet. But. I am in the Med now, or in the Caribbean now, and I think he's in the Caribbean too, so it'd be nice to hook up with some of these sailing channels that I have never met. Yeah, I've seen him actually on the... Oh, have channels. you? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it may be on Delos or something. What are, what are, some, of the, what are, the, what are some of the sailing channels that you guys watch, or that's inspired you? Uh, Delos, Delos, definitely. Well, apart from Delos. sailing Zagara, right? Oh, yeah, 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 that's number one. <laughs> that's, <laughs> really, that's a given, but... Yeah, Delos is my favorite. Me too. Me yeah. too. I used to watch them before I started cruising. Yeah. Like, oh man, I'm gonna do it. Yeah, that definitely pushed us over the edge to buy the boat watching the Delos episodes. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's definitely. Such, that's such a cool thing. Yeah. Right on, right on. Okay, we're gonna take two more questions and then we're gonna shut this off. So we can enjoy sailing. Mm -hmm. uh, Alvaro says, who's the best kisser out of the three? Well, three, that's four of us. No, no, yes, they're yes. asking me. Oh, <laughs> my God. That's so funny. Uh, Sue says, where are you now, and how deep is the ocean where you're at? Oh, okay. Let's see. Let's look at the chart, and let's see on the bottom. And how fast are we going right now? So, we are in about 819 meters. So, that's roughly, what, 20... 400 feet yeah I mean our depth is not registering because it's too deep but the charts saying about 800 meters and we're doing about five knots uh, we're, we've got a single reef in the main and the jib is fully out but we're beating pretty hard I mean you can see the blue is where we're the, the T is where we're pointed and the blue is where we're actually going is that right no the um, can you, can you the explain A's. this because I have never had this instrument so the A is apparent wind the T is true wind so the the, the apparent wind is is well you know the difference between apparent and true wind. oh I was way off yeah don't let me don't let me explain the instruments so we, anymore we've got 36 degrees of apparent wind 
36 degree was 38 now. But. Can we tell where we're going from this? No, this is just the wind. If you want to look at the chart, you can see the, if you look at the chart here. So if we zoom out, the blue line is where we're pointing. The red line is where we're actually traveling because the wind is pushing us. We're going, as well as going forwards, we're going slightly sideways. So this is the line we're actually moving along. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Okay, cool. And we're doing about five knots, right? Yeah, it varies depending on the wind. We've only got 14 knots of wind at the moment. Okay. And just to keep things not too tilted and comfortable for the girls, we're, we've got a reef in. All right. This is very comfortable though. Yeah. Are you guys comfortable? Very comfortable. Do you guys need anything? Cocktail. Uh, cocktail, <laughs> beer. James, uh, can you get the girls a cocktail or beer? No, I'm not a margarita. <laughs> All part of the service. <laughs> we already got a fan. We already got a fan. <laughs> All right. What do you guys do for power? Lots of amps drained on this boat. Oh, so that's... Very good question. So we've just upgraded our batteries to lithium batteries. So we, we put some battleborne batteries on board. Would it be easy for us to go see those? Yeah, let's do it. Right on. Downstairs, people. If you guys haven't gotten the tour of the boat, this is the salon. And this is a nice salon, man. Galley's up forward. Stove is offset on a gimbal. And then there's a big master cabin in here. Hold on, I just want to show them your master okay. cabin real quick. Will you look at this? Tell me that doesn't look comfy. Hey, James, I got to go take a nap, dude. Yeah, I got to have a little Okay, let's see the batteries. Oh, those are pretty. So these are the lithiums. These are the battle born lithiums that we've put in. Um, we, we had eight AGM batteries um, and we got rid of those and we've got three lithiums now. Only three? Um, yeah, well, shipping them in from the US to the Caribbean was a bit of an issue. So we're going to see how that goes. We may add another one or two when we go to America later on in the year. But we've got 960 watts of solar, so we've got solar panels, 960 watts, they charge the lithiums. Um, we've also got a 10 kilowatt generator on board, um, so if we want to run like the AC, we've got air conditioning on here, but if we, if we want to run that or we want to run the dive compressor to fill up our dive tanks, um, or the water maker, we've got a desalinator which, which turns the salt water into drinking water. So for those things we need to run the generator. Um, they're too big, they're too powerful to run off the, off the batteries. Would it be easy to go look at the um, generator? Yeah, so well I can show you, let's show you the engine. Sweet. Um, so if we just lift the stairs up here. So, I don't know if you can see that, is it too dark? Oh yeah, no, no, we can see it. So this we've got a 110 um, horsepower Yanmar engine um, that powers the yacht. And then behind it, um, you can see that white box, that's the generator, that's the Fisher Panda 10 kilowatt generator. And then the shelf above are some of my tools that I've got there. That's a beautiful engine room, man. Yeah, you can access it on both sides as well. So it's quite easy to work on the engine. Um, cool. So yeah, that's cool. Beautiful. Okay, so that's what he does for power, people. Let's get out of here, it's hot. Yeah. All of the, it's hot downstairs because all of the hatches are closed because we're taking some water. Whenever you go upwind when you're sailing, you're going against the wind and against the waves because the wind makes the waves and it's just pounding and getting the deck real wet. And actually, let me just show you that too. Having fun? Yeah. Good. You don't want to leave those hatches open or the entire boat's going to get wet. So it makes it hot downstairs. The hatches are open! Okay, we're going to take two more questions and then we're going to shut this thing off. It's been about an hour. 
Uh, is there AC on the boat? And why is it hot if there's AC on the boat? Yeah, well, we, we, we've got air conditioning on the boat, but um, it uses up a lot of power. So we're not running the generator at the moment. We're sailing. We're using solar. We're using the wind. We're not using anything to power the solar. Uh, sorry, to power the air conditioning. So we, we really only use the air conditioning when we're in, like, in dock and in a marina. Or if we're at anchor and it's really hot, we can run the generator and use the AC. So, yeah. Um, let's go. What year is the vessel? Uh, it's two years old, 2018 it was built in the summer of 2018. Do you have a wind turbine? No, we don't. Um, and the reason for that is um, they don't really create that much power. Um, and they're quite noisy as well. Yeah, they're quite noisy and they don't really create that much power so the whole thing with the lithiums is that they can take a lot more charge a lot quicker so we hope that the solar is gonna um is gonna work a lot better with the lithiums okay <clears throat> let's all get over here and say goodbye to everyone it's been really fun Thank you to uh, James and Philippa for taking us aboard their beautiful boat. You're welcome. We love you guys, and thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in. See you. Bye. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we did <hit> something. <laughs>